What's going on, everybody? Dogman Dan here in Warframe, and hopefully the audio is okay on this because we're doing this live because it's the easiest way, I think, to show you. So I'm over here inside the solar rails, and what I want to do is I want to talk to you a little bit more and give you some more detail because there's a lot of detail that's missing that many people never find out about or know about, and really it needs to be spread so you can further understand what the argument is in terms of solar rails, why things cost so much, this and that. Okay, so first... Let's come over here and look inside the uh, Alliance area now. As you can see, we've got two rails done, but look at the expense of the rail. So you're, you're, you're talking a lot of money here for credits, gallium, rubido, placids, control modules. In addition to that, you do need to have regiments, some Spectre regiments. As you can see, um, we've got this one here. I've already put the credits in, but we need to get more Spectres and more, or more Vapor and Phase Spectres. 250 and 625 just to create a phase specter regiment uh if you're going to go all the way up to cosmic specter you take a look at this you got 75 four specter 175 cosmic specter and a million credits this stuff gets expensive and these are things that you need to have available you need to have these regiments available for when you go to deploy the solar rails so you have some way to guard in the defenses now um, in terms of this, so let's come over here, and this is the stuff that nobody's ever really seen, and this is what I really think it's time to show off to everybody. So, hopefully we do this right. We're going to come over here, and we're going to do an edit a schema. Okay, uh, this is not a completed setup in any way, shape, or form. This is just so you can get an idea of what we're looking at in terms of things. So, I'm going to hit select. It's going to tell me I'm leaving the dojo. Yes, I'm leaving a dojo. Now, everybody that is in the clan or alliances does have access to do that once a rail is created. Uh, and that is because inside the rail, we're going to build this uh, solar rail, basically. We're going to put defenses up. We're going to have to dig in more resources to do this. So it's no different in terms of things. You've got a point A and a point B here for the shield stuff that you've got to... Uh, take over then you move into the next phase and so what we're gonna do is we put some stuff out here and then we put stuff inside farther and I'll show you here so I'm into the escape screen we'll just take this the easy way uh, place the decoration it's not really decoration so you got specter transporter uh, used to reinforce your defenses with specter allies you want to put them someplace where it's not easily um, attacked if you will Okay, then you've also got the, the Rajin chant, uh, cannon, which is an assault cannon. you got the Sujin, which is a rocket launcher. And you got the Dojin, which is a sniper cannon. So depending upon where you want to put these. And keep in mind, when we're in the outside area, we only have 15 capacity. So you're not going to have a lot of room to put things down. So you probably want to work with the guns versus the Spectre reinforcements on the outside since they take up six points. But... Let's just show you. Let's say we take a uh, Sujin. We're going to take this. Okay. And what I want to do is I'm going to want to protect this point here. So why not just go ahead and uh, let me see if I can do this or not. It may not let me do it. Oh, it's not letting me do it. Uh, let's just say because I've seen people do this in the past. We'll just go ahead and put that right there. Okay. Boom. There you go. Now it's kind of like right in the way. And we'll just, this is just, you know, for experimental purposes. Now, if I were to go and look at this, okay, come into decorations, edit the decoration, and click on it, clicky click, there we go. Now you're looking at credits, alloy plate, control modules, ferrite, and Rubidio. And nothing, um, you know, inexpensive if you will i mean you're looking at 11,000 ferrite um 3300 rubido alloy plate i could care less about we've got millions of it control modules credit's not so bad but just think about this when you're putting down your resources uh you're going to be able excuse me you're going to be able to put down several weapon re weapons out here okay so you're going to have to put in all that extra stuff then you come inside and if you've run a conflict before, you know there's several uh, sections to this. All right, so you're in here. Now what you're going to do, and there's the logo. It looks so freaking awesome, doesn't it? 
Uh, you're going to come in here. You're going to create your next node, which is the second part of the conflict. And then after this node is built, then you're going to create the third node, which is the last part of the conflict, more or less, um, when you're setting these up. So as you can see, you got a data relay. If you look at the price of this, you're talking 50,000 credits, 80,000 salvage, 45,000 bundle, 2,500 Rubido, five Oricon cells if you wanted to create this data relay which uh, secures the system, prevent your enemies from hacking these terminals or overriding these security protocols. And of course, this is how you want to set up your stuff. Um, I'm not going to go into full detail on how you set stuff up, but you got your primary generator room, uh, which is probably familiar to most people. Several generators power the defense grid protecting this room, so you don't want to let your enemies destroy them. Again, if you're looking at this, 50,000 credits, salvage, polymer bundle, ruby dough, orican cells, uh, and here we go, we got a secondary generator the same way. And as you can see, it quickly becomes expensive because once you build the room, then you've got capacity in that room to put down turrets and to put down the Spectre regiments as well um, in there. So that's going to all take up more resources. So understanding as terms of resources why people do charge for resources um, it's because this is what it is. This is what it takes to maintain the rail. To maintain these, you have to have all those credits available, all the, well, not the credits, all the resources available uh, at all times. So if a rail goes down, you've got to rebuild the whole damn thing over again, which is why they do charge for resources. And the same thing with money. Money is expensive as well. But um, I think the pricing is outrageous. There is not a real need to over gouge everybody if you will i mean the 12 hours that you're on the rail you're getting enough resources in between there there shouldn't be no 75 percent 99 percent resource uh you know take from anybody i don't personally think it should ever go over 25 percent but that's just me but uh, again this is also you know relying on your own alliance so you've got all your members that have to come in here and have to help build this well not necessarily build it but have to help fund it and then you need those funds to be available when the rail goes down or when the rail needs to be um, at the end of the conflict if you finish and you're successful you need to go ahead and still put the resources back into the rail to um, fix anything that was damaged or destroyed so hopefully that just gives you an inside look at the solar rails everything sounded okay i hope uh, we'll see in post if you have any comments or questions, please do feel free to leave them below. I will gladly answer them as best I can. But I wanted to give you an inside look at something that nobody has ever really talked about before. And hopefully we can go ahead and get some of this stuff addressed in the future to fix some of these issues. Thanks for watching as always. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. We'll see you soon.